Hi there, it's Jeff here. I think state versus private ownership is a likely topic in the 2025 exam. So I've decided to take the issue of Scotrail, which was nationalised in 2022, and look at some of the arguments for and against state versus private ownership. Let's work through a few extracts just to give you a bit of background. So Scotrail is the main operator operating in Scotland. Obviously, businesses such as LNER operate uh, both to and from Scotland. LNER is also now state-owned, but Scotrail was taken into public ownership on the 1st of April 2022 at the end of the franchise agreement with Abellio, a Dutch Dutch company that operated business uh, train services within Scotland for the best part of seven years. Uh, Scotrail has uh, had experienced ups and downs. Uh, passenger numbers have gone up significantly since 2021, but you'd expect that in a way because that was a year which was uh, where services were severely affected by lockdowns and train cancellations in the wake of the pandemic. But they carry over 82 million passengers they did last year. However, the number of train cancellations has gone up 27,000 um, since the transition to public ownership. Uh, Scott Rail is uh, facing uh, traditional issues, driver shortages, industrial action and an ageing rolling stock. They have a long run plan to replace about two thirds of their trains over the next 15 years. What I've done there is just highlight some of the data in the extracts. When you're reading extracts in the exam, have a pen, have a highlighter pen handy to highlight the data and the key points you might be referring to in your answer. Extract two is about ticket pricing. Initially, the Scottish Government, uh, well, last year, increased fares by 8.7%, a significant increase across all ScotRail services, in part, of course, a reflection of the cost of living crisis and a cause of it. They brought in a pilot scheme in the autumn of 2023, eliminating peak fares. Uh, and the nice little example of the peak time fare between Glasgow and Edinburgh cut from £31 to £16, a significant reduction. Despite this, there's only a, just a 7% increase in rail usage, suggesting low price elasticity of demand across the network as a whole. Peak fares reinstated on the, in September 2024, but they brought in a 20% discount on season tickets and expanded the FlexiPass scheme. So the Scottish Government is certainly being proactive in terms of how they try to uh, use ticket pricing as a way of increasing usage of the network. The train network itself is subsidised by the Scottish Government. And in the last data that we have, well, two bits of data in the extracts, just before the pandemic, the average subsidy per journey was £2.55. With only one route, Edmund to Glasgow via Falkirk, generating enough money coming in to exceed the operating costs. Uh, a Scottish subsidies uh, cover about two thirds of the cost of running a Scotrail and nearly £700 million of subsidy in the year to March 2023. So when you get a question, have a look at the extracts, get the highlighter pen out and really work through the extracts, highlighting the things that you could well be bringing in to your answer as part of application. So let's have a look at some of the key arguments, maybe a couple on both sides, for and against state ownership of train operating companies and networks such as Scott Royal. Well, the main argument for is about the, the fact that state-owned businesses tend to have different business objectives. They can operate more in the social sphere rather than the private sphere. So a central argument is that public operators, that means the state, are more accountable to taxpayers rather than shareholders. It allows governments to intervene in setting prices to shape services and ticket prices around social needs rather than pure abnormal profit motives. Extract 2 mentions the 20% discount on FlexiPass tickets. Scott Rail is less likely, perhaps, to use their monopoly power to charge a very high profit maximising price. Consequently, if average fares are lower than with Abellio, the private sector franchise, then rail transport becomes more affordable and there'll be an overall increase in consumer surplus, which is a measure of welfare. And if passenger numbers go up, that means the rail network itself is being used more efficiently. Now, you can use a classic monopoly diagram here. This will be the profit maximising monopoly uh, output Q1 price P1, where they're pricing well above average cost and making high super normal profits. In theory, a state-owned firm might bring prices down on average 
of course, a big lot of price discrimination within that. Let's say the big price is down to P2. That causes output to expand from Q1 to Q2 and uh, it makes better use of existing capacity. Lower prices increase consumer surplus for rail travellers. Now, if you draw the demand curve to the y-axis, you can then show the impact on consumer surplus. It goes up from, let's see, uh, DBP, uh, sorry, DAB1, P1, DAP1 to DBP2, an increase in consumer surplus of P1, A, B, P2. Now, labelling the diagram is important here because it allows you to put the labels which I haven't done, uh, into the text of your answer. So you're linking your diagram to the text of your exam answer. So that is a monopoly diagram uh, you can use. A second key point is that public or state ownership means that profits can be reinvested directly into the rail network, assuming that lines in the network makes a profit. So you can invest the money directly into infrastructure, uh, new rolling stock and services. And crucially, it allows better, possibly better coordination with the national transport strategy. So the Scottish government clearly has the net zero targets. They want to, uh, they've op they're opening new stations. We know that for a fact. They're trying to develop an integrated transport system with tram, local buses and cycling schemes. The extract one says that since nationalisation, there has been a big rise in passenger numbers, in part, perhaps evidence that public ownership can deliver a successful service as they emerge from the pandemic. Can you see what I'm trying to do here as well? I'm trying to use at least one reference to an extract in each paragraph. That's a really good little rule of thumb to use in the exam. Always try to put one piece of evidence into each paragraph that you write so that you're going to get those higher marks for application. Counter arguments, of course. First of all, um, uh, just simply transferring ownership Nationalisation of ScotRail does not automatically solve the deep-rooted operational issues. Extract 1, again, making use of the reference there, says that ScotRail saw nearly 27,500 cancellations. Issues like skilled labour shortages of drivers, industrial disputes, plague services, ownership structure alone cannot resolve systemic problems. There are wider, deeper issues facing the transport network, a pure transfer of ownership does not really resolve. And then a much deeper paragraph here, a state-run system may be more susceptible, I love that word, susceptible, to political short-termism or inefficient management, which economists call X inefficiency. So a state-run system, which is not subject to the pressures of the stock market or private, private investors, uh, may well ultimately reduce uh, productivity and increase losses. Extract 2 says the average subsidy is £2.55, uh, and that could go up if those losses increase. Critics of the decision to nationalise fear that decisions may be made for political reasons, for example, avoiding fair rail increases just before an election, rather than for long-term allocative efficiency and innovation. Without the pressures of competition or profit, state-owned railways may require bigger subsidies. Uh, was it over £600 million, of course, the subsidy in 2023? Investments in staff, infrastructure, rolling stock must be funded by borrowing money, potentially limiting or crowding out spending in other key areas. That's not to say that transport investment isn't needed. It is, but governments do not have an unlimited pot of money. In some exams, you have to come to a conclusion. Uh, in some exams, it's called the final region judgment. Here's my little attempt at it. The issue of state ownership is a complex issue, which it is, with mixed evidence. Whilst there are some positive indicators, uh, including things like uh, more flexible ticket pricing and increased passenger numbers, there are also concerns about hefty fare increases overall and reduced service frequencies, increased delays. That's true, by the way, across the UK, that the rail system is creaking. The infrastructure and the capacity of the system simply isn't really designed to cope with passenger numbers. And those labour shortages, staff shortages, are certainly the root cause of lots of train cancellations. On balance is a nice phrase to use. Providing the Scottish Government can fund both operating subsidies and finance and necessary investment, the long run arguments seem to favour state ownership rather than train services provided by private operators. Now, this is why I'm bringing a value judgment into my discussion here. I favour state ownership when it comes to rail transport be it LNER or whatever it is, or ScotRail, I'm, I'm happy, 
reasonably happy from a political economy viewpoint that these services are now state-owned rather than run by private equity whose focus is often short-term versus long-term. But that's a, that's a personal view. It's a value judgment. So this is a big, important topic at the moment, the whole issue of state versus private ownership. In the UK, uh, the Labour government is committed to returning the rail industry to state ownership piece by piece as train franchises come up for renewal. The plan is to convert them into state-owned businesses to run the system. And this is where this is, this is where the rail network is going to go over the next four to five years. So I think by the end of this decade, the UK rail network will be largely in state versus private hands. Thanks for joining in. I hope you found the video useful. If you did, consider pressing like and subscribe to the channel. Take care and see you soon.